ancient words impart holy words of our faith handed down to this age came to us through sacrifice oh heed the faithful words of christ holy words long preserved for our walk in this world they resound with god's own heart oh let the ancient words Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words impart yes we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words impart who oh, let the ancient words Lord and me, Father, thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for giving us your word. And we're able to read it to this day, Lord, and it still be applicable to our lives. Lord, help us to trust in you and in all the things that are happening in this world, Lord. You are our firm foundation and you haven't changed since the beginning of time, Lord. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins, Lord, that we can have hope. We can experience your love in our lives, Lord. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you so much. Thomas, thank you. For those of you that maybe tuning in out there right now. I'm going to need a hand here. Can you give me a hand? I can't twist this knob. Sorry about that. That knob right there. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, if you'll tighten it down. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. I always hate to ask for that kind of help, but, you know, what can I tell you? Here we are. For those of those tuning in out there, if you getting in later, you think you're getting late. We had kind of a technical problem. The first part of the service got, got posted off to a different Facebook page. So that's going to be interesting. So it's been corrected now, and it's now, now on ours. So uh, you'll be picking up the last song and uh, the service. So, you know, the, the message. So, you know, that's okay. You know, uh, I have absolutely no idea what happens out there in, in, in Never Never Land where all technical stuff goes. How many of you love technology? Yeah. You love technology? Uh, there are four people here that says they love technology. And my wife was one of them. Oh, little sarcasm. Gotcha, gotcha. From the moment uh, you became a Christian, God enrolled you in the classroom of faith because he desires to develop your relationship with him and to show you the very best. We're going to be talking a little bit about faith today, where it comes from and what it means and how it looks. So, what does the Bible say? Well, the Bible says a lot of incredible things. It tells us that uh, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, 
It's the conviction of things not yet seen. That's probably the best definition you'll get. It's out of Hebrews 11 and, and, and chapter 1. James tells us that a living faith compels us uh, to, go, to do good works. And Jesus says that if you have the faith of a little mustard seed, you can say to a mountain, be thou removed, and it will be removed. Faith. It's an important element of our life, is it not? Faith uh, pleases God. And salvation comes uh, by faith, by grace through faith. We are called to live by faith, walk by faith, and not by sight. Faith is tested in trials. Faith produces endurance, and faith sanctifies us. And There's also the shield of faith, which is part of the armor of God, and we find that faith is also a part of the, the cluster of the fruit of the Spirit, faith. One is justified by faith, and you and I are to walk by faith. Now, whether you're a seasoned man or woman of the Word of God or a, a new believer, I, I, I pray that you know that the gospel is speaking to you. And when the gospel speaks to you, it is demanding a, uh, a response you know, from you. Even on days when you feel as if you can't conjure up the words, the Holy Spirit is at work. That's the assurance. That's the, the grace that we have. So if you're listening to me today and you've not placed your faith in, in, in Jesus, in his death and his resurrection, I invite you to listen to the truth that is going to be spoken this morning and uh, and like those young folk and, and, and adults that received Jesus the other night, receive him. And you'll receive life. If you're listening right now, and you have received him, you've placed your faith in his death and his resurrection, then I invite you to examine your life according to these truths. And then give Christ what he deserves most of all, your full and absolute surrender, your obedience. How can we demonstrate our love for him? He says, if you love me, you will obey me. If you love me, you'll keep my words. So that's my invitation to you this morning. So as we go on through, the, the beginning of our, our, our faith journey starts in the simplest and most profound of ways. It starts with hearing. Isn't that simple? We've been looking at Romans 10, and we've, we, we've covered that. And you all kind of know that 17th verse. Maybe by heart, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. We're going to be examining that. You see, it's, it's not enough to hear the enticing words of other men about God, but we need to hear the word of God and recognize it for exactly what it is, God's word spoken to your heart. That's what it is. I shared in Sunday school uh, out of out of uh, uh, First Thessalonians two and verse thirteen, actually uh, second and and Second Thessalonians two thirteen, and and I want to share it to you with you out of the the Amplified. He says, "We also thank God continually for this, for when you received the word of God concerning salvation." which you heard from us. Do you see a pattern here? You welcomed it. Not as the words of mere men, but truly what it is. The word of God. Which is effectually at work in you who 
believe. Exercising its inherent and supernatural power in those of faith. Isn't that beautiful? Father, I ask you to take something that is so simple to us. We, we see it, we read it. And Lord, there's, there's, there's a simplicity about the idea that faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of Christ. Probably so simple, Lord, that we gloss over it, move away from it, or we make it weak by saying, well, I've heard, therefore I am. And we miss what you want us to hear. So God, this morning I ask you to open our ears, open our eyes, open our heart to receive your word engrafted and empowered in Jesus' name. Amen. So what can we learn from Romans 10, 17? First of all, we learn that the, uh, the way of faith, the way faith in Christ comes into our life. You know, that sounds simple, doesn't it? But like I, I, I firmly believe we hear this and, and I've talked to people, they say, well, we've heard that before. Okay. But what difference did it make in your life? I've had people say they've gone out at, at, at different times over the years and they say, well, I've heard that and I've heard that and I've heard that. I've, I've heard it ad nauseum. Okay. Can you tell me what change that hearing made in your life? No, all you heard was some words that, that passed through the air that went through this orifice called an ear. Uh, it rattled around and made those vibrations in your ear, went to your brain. Your brain translated the, the facts of what you heard, but it made absolutely no change whatsoever in your life. You didn't hear it. Not really, not the way Scripture is telling us. You see, the beauty and the simplicity of all is that faith comes only in the most natural and simplest ways. Paul says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Faith comes by hearing, not by any other means. Faith doesn't come by inheritance. You can't get it. Faith isn't passed from one generation to another and to another. You don't get it from your mom and your dad. It isn't passed on to you like DNA, like, like other traits that go on. It just doesn't do that. In fact, John writes and he says in John 1 and verse 12, he says, for as many as received him, as many as received him. How do you receive him? Anybody? Hmm? Okay, yeah, by, by, by faith. You receive him, you're, you're saved by grace through faith. Is that how you receive him? For as many as receive him, so you put it in there, by faith, as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, even those who believe on his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. Jesus tells us that that which is flesh, born, you know, uh, that which is born of flesh is flesh. This new birth isn't passed on from, uh, from parent to child. Nothing spiritual is ever inherited. All children, even those from those godly Christian families, are, as David puts it, born and brought forth in iniquity and estranged from God from the womb. You don't get the Jesus gene passed down to you. No matter how godly your parents may have been, the children themselves have to make a personal decision to receive. Remember years ago in the I Founded campaign, uh, back at, boy, that, that ages me, doesn't it? 1975, Bill. That'll take you back a few years. 
we'd make phone calls to people, and you know, you had billboards all over the place. Those of you that were involved in that kind of national campaign, and uh, and boy, it was going. And, and, and the lady, as I said, uh, you know, we we're talking about. I, she says, "Of course, I'm a Christian. I'm an American." <laughs> okay. Does that mean all Americans go on to heaven? Everybody else can go hell. No, I think she missed something in there. You don't narrate it. You, you don't get it by religion. It doesn't come by being faithfully and devoutly religious. Man, I know a lot of religious people who are, are highly religious. They follow all the ordinances, all the demands and regulations of a particular religion. They go out and through every rite and ritual assigned to them. But they don't have faith. The Pharisees were highly religious. By the time they were 20, they had memorized the entire Tanakh. That would be from Genesis to Malachi. How many of you have memorized the Old Testament? They had before they were 20 years of age. Actually, before they were 18. Most of them by the time they were 15 and going on. We've talked a little about that on our, our, our morning Bible studies. You know, These were highly religious people. Not only that... But you see, they had identified uh, six, uh, 663 laws in the Old Testament and they kept them faithfully along with, or tried to, along with all the oral tradition that went along with them. That's religious, folks. When I was in India, I saw, I saw a mountain that was being chiseled away with, with a little hammer and chisel, and a family had been working on that for six generations. That was their religious devotion to their God. That's religion. That's faithfulness. But memorizing a set of doctrines or even memorizing scripture and being able to repeat verse after verse after verse and making every attempt to keep every rule and regu regulation does not guarantee saving faith. You know, I say, and I ask people sometimes, have any of you memorized the Old Testament? You know, you're, you're got, have good taste of, there, there's one man in my life, his name was Scotty. I worked with him, Sherry knew him. We'd have him out. We called him a living Bible because he literally had memorized the Bible cover to cover. And the youth group, the kids would throw scripture at him and he just, yo, know, it'd just come out. It'd just come out. He'd wow you, wouldn't he, hon? It's kind of amazing that way. But you know, that word had also penetrated in the man. You see, of the Pharisees, Jesus said this in John 5, verses 37 through 39. And the father, said, the father who sent me, he has testified of me. And you neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. You didn't have his word abiding in you. Whoa. For you did not believe. By the way, that's another word for faith. You didn't believe him who whom he sent. Now, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me, Jesus says. And you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. Christ indicated they didn't know him. Oh, listen, they'd heard the word. They'd memorized the word, but they didn't know the word. Got faith by work. There are those who think that they, if they, if they just knock on X number of doors, or if they join a group, or fill out a decision card, or or get baptized, or keep a particular list of rules and regulations, and if they give a set percentage of their income, uh, you know, to the organization, if 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 they have faith. Paul plainly tells us in Romans 5, 1, therefore having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. How are we justified? By faith. 
And you can't get it by working. So, so faith didn't come by these other means. So how does faith come? That's where you look at the positive aspect of our text. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Hearing that brings that faith is simply not, not simply just cognitive assembling of facts and figures about something. It isn't filling our head. It isn't taking that cognitive part of our brain and searching it out and putting all these facts in the various little drawers that they need to go through in our brain. So when something comes up, oh yeah, I can go and drag that out and there it is. That's not how faith comes. That is not hearing. The word and the concept that Paul uses is closely associated when in the Hebrew Bible it is this word that is used when, when the New Testament is translated into Hebrew, the word is Shema. Faith comes by Shema. Now we talked a little about what the great Shema is. That is, uh, hero, hero, Israel, the Lord of God is one. You know that, that, that passage? This is hearing that moves from the cognitive portion of our brain, our brain where we store the facts and the figures to the active part of our consciousness that moves us to receive and obey what we have come to understand. It moves from here to here to here. It moves us to act. It moves us to respond. That's why I could say to the gentleman who said, I've heard this ad nauseum, yes, but what difference has it made in your life? You see, all the cognitive knowledge that we want to put up here does nothing for us until it has moved down to that, 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 that place where, where it moves in conscious action in our life and we act upon what we've come to understand. It is a hearing that is empowered by the Holy Spirit to give birth to faith, to believe in God. It cannot happen without the work of the Holy Spirit. Faith comes when the Word of God reaches my mind and grasps my heart and moves me to trust Christ Jesus with everything. And that, my friend, is a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. It is not the work of the flesh. Sometimes faith in Christ comes by hearing a simple statement of the gospel. Some come after hearing the uh, simple sermon on John 3.16, where they told that God loved them and demonstrated his love this way. He sent his only begotten son to die for them, that they may have life. And have it abundantly. Others come when they, they hear the negative side of the cross. That there is judgment. Like we talked about in Sunday school. That there is judgment. And those who reject Christ, those who don't receive him, will face eternal punishment separated from God for, what's that word? Eternity. And they begin to realize the impact of that. i got to tell you... I still am blown away by the concept that you brought into Sunday school. Hell is the absolute absence of everything good. Think of everything good that's come into your life. Think of everything that, 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 that you hold good to. Friendship. How many of you like friendship? There's no friendship in hell. How many of you... I have hope here today. There's no hope in hell. It's something good that came from God. You see what I'm talking about? It's a concept that I may have understood or back here somewhere, but you've made it so alive. And I got to thinking about good things in my life, the good things that are there. There is no good in hell. The, because all good things come from God and God is not there. The only thing of God that's in hell is judgment. Think about it. When people hear that negative side of the gospel, some 
It affects the heart. They understand, but it moves them to action. Then there are others who, 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 whose faith in Christ comes when they, they hear the love and the mercy and the pity of Christ. Faith comes by hearing of the free forgiveness that we have in Christ obtained by the agony and stripes and, and, and nail prints of the crucified Christ. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. Are you understanding a little bit more what we're talking about? Well, let me, let me give you a picture of it. second thing I want you to see is, is what does faith by hearing look like? Do we have any examples of it that we can draw from? We do. Scripture is full of examples that we can look at uh, that show us what happens when, when hearing moves from mere acceptance of facts presented to being supernaturally empowered to receive and obey. Think for a moment of the Samaritan woman. She's on your list there. Think of her. I mean, she encountered Jesus at a well and he revealed himself to her and left her water jar to go proclaim that the living water that she had discovered and she gave it to the whole community, didn't she? Take a look at verse chapter four, <clears throat> verses twenty-eight through thirty. To the uh, uh, to the woman left uh, the woman left her water pot, went into the city and said to the man, "Come see the man who told me all things I have done." This is not the Christ, is it? And they went out of the city and were coming to him. And verse thirty-nine goes on to share from that uh, from that city. Many of the Samaritans believed him because of the word. Of the woman who testified, he told me everything that I have ever done. Have you thought about that? She told them. They heard. What did they hear? They heard the sweet gospel. They heard that the one who promised salvation has come. So then the Samaritans came to Jesus and were asking him to stay with them. And he stayed there for two days and many more believed because of his word and they were saying to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves. We have shema, we have heard for ourselves and know. How did they know and how do we know they know? It's because it moved them to obedient action. Take a look at the demon-possessed man. We have him. Jesus sets him free from a, a legion of demons, and he wanted to go with Jesus. I want to follow you. I want to go where you go. And Jesus and the disciples wouldn't allow him. Instead, this is what Jesus said. I got another assignment for you. Look at verse 18, Mark 5. And he was getting into the boat, and the man who was demon possessed was imploring him that he might accompany him. And. and <laughs> and he did not let him, but he said to him, go home to your people and report to them the great things the Lord has done. What is he telling them to do? Anybody? Huh? Go tell them what I've done. Go what? Go live righteously before them so they can see you're all cleaned up. Right? No. Go what? Tell them. Open your mouth and utter the words and share the word of Christ with him. Tell them uh, what the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. And he went away and began to what? Live righteously before them? No. Proclaim in Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. His outward appearance just simply backed up his words, and they heard. I wonder how many, men, how many lives were changed because they heard the witness, the words of this one man sharing the word of Christ. This man not only heard the words of Jesus, these words were accepted and they changed his life forever. And the evidence of that change is the obedience that sent him home to tell everyone. And 
all the people were amazed. Take a look at Mary Magdalene. Jesus gave her some instructions, didn't he? Told her to, to turn loose of him and go share the good news of what she'd seen. What did she see? The resurrected, glorified Christ, right? Jesus said to her, stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came. Doing what? Guess who I saw? Suppose when she busted in that upper room, she did it quietly. That word announcing means that she's shouting at the top of her lungs. She's the town crier announcing to the disciples, I've seen the Lord! And he said these things to her. That would wake them up out of their sleep, wouldn't it? When Jesus has changed your life, you can't help but tell others. When you come to the knowledge of the saving grace of the Savior, you're unable to remain silent. It changes you in the most significant and powerful ways she heard. It changed her. Moved her to obey others. Now, here's a lady I included because she mystifies me, and it probably tells the story of hearing better than any others that I can tell you, and that's Lydia of Thyatira. Lydia is a successful businesswoman. She is a seller of purple fabric and perhaps one of the first, and probably the first convert in all of the, the continent of Europe. And, 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 and her story shows us the whole process. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of Christ. <coughs> Acts 16, 14, it says, The woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, seller of purple fabric, a worshiper of God, was listening, and the Lord opened her heart to respond to the things spoken by Paul. What happened? She's listening. She's accumulating all kinds of facts. She's putting them where they belong. But all of a sudden, the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit begins to go to work and opens up her heart, gives her a deeper understanding, and changes her immediately, powerfully. Why? Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It didn't stop, but it opened the door to the first church to be planted in Europe. They're in Philippi. That's where they met. And when she, had, she and her household had been baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. And it is there that, of course, Paul and, and Silas end up in prison and the earthquake and all of that. Faith comes by hearing. Is an important message taken out of Romans 10, 17, and its entire chapter is rich and motivating every believer to stand and share the message of salvation to anyone who will hear. And I'm going to take the last few minutes that we have and share with you uh, what then is our responsibility. What is our responsibility? I, I cannot name many people who have come to saving faith in Christ without having first heard the gospel from somebody. Is anybody here that had got saved but nobody ever shared the gospel with you? Anybody? Anybody? No. Every one of us had somebody and oftentimes multiple somebodies to share the gospel with us, it, with us, right? People need to hear. And you and I have been sent to tell. The Lord's work in an amazing way, revealing himself to people however he chooses to do it. However our commission from Jesus is to go and make disciples of all nations and baptize them and teach them. And then he promises that he'll be with us. 
The essence we are supposed to tell others is the truth about Jesus Christ. Mark's expression of the Great Commission is this. In Mark 16, 15, he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news concerning Jesus Christ to all creation. It's very simple. Has the gospel message penetrated from your cognitive to your, to, 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 to your obedient life? Then you must go and you must tell. This means that making disciples includes proclaiming that good news. Now, here's the word that everybody in, in our morning Bible study had learned to hate, and that's the word context. We cannot move off this passage until we look at the context in which Paul writes it. 10, Romans 10, verse 13 says, Whoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? saved, then how will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without someone to tell them or a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? For it's written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of great things. However, they did not all heed the good news for Isaiah said, who has believed our report. So what? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of Christ. Do you see that little phrase there that we've been examining and looking at and seeing examples of? Is right there in context with telling the world about Christ. How are they going to believe unless they hear? How are they going to hear unless somebody tells them? How is somebody going to tell them unless somebody is sent? And at the end of that, he says, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of Christ. The context of this verse lays in the heart of carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ to whoever will hear. In order to have faith in something or someone we need to have this solid awareness of their existence. And furthermore, when people hear the word of God, they know and trust in a godly order of life and why we should accept the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, for the atonement with faith in him. We trust him. You hear, and that hearing, God takes and makes it alive to the heart of an individual. Think of it this way. How do you know two and two equals four? How do you know broccoli is a vegetable? Simply put, somebody a little older and down the road taught you, didn't they? And they didn't have to be too far down the road for you to learn that lesson. How is somebody going to know that Jesus can forgive them of their sin and save them for eternity unless somebody a little further down the road doesn't tell them? And when you tell them, and when they hear in the Holy Spirit, that's why you, you, you ought to go forth in witnessing with prayer on your lips because, you know, let the Holy Spirit then do his work of making that word alive to their heart. We all know that little chorus. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity one day will be restored. And they'll know we are Christian by our love, by our love. Yea, they'll know we are Christian by our love. Well, that's true. But it's only true to a point. Nobody ever got saved by watching anybody else's lifestyle. People don't get saved by watching the way you live. Because you see, if they watch me long enough, they're going to see me do what? They're going to see me fail. Uh, you, you put me under the microphone, uh, and, and you, you watch me long enough, I'm, I'm going to blow it, aren't I? Huh, Billy? 
that's where I am. So I need to tell them. And you need to tell them. When you truly love Christ as he loved you, well, love carries a balance, doesn't it? Words and action, well, so does faith. That same balance of words and action. Faith comes by hearing is a thought that is incredibly deep to ponder. Think about it and what it means. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of Christ. Are you one that sits and says, oh, I've heard that and I've heard it and I've heard it ad nauseum? Or have when you heard it, has it changed your life? When you open up your Bible in the morning and you read it, that's a method of hearing it. And as you read it, are they words on a page and assembling information? Or the words on that page change your life? That's what's meant by faith comes by hearing. Would you stand? Gracious and good God, we thank you. Thank you for your mercy and your love this morning. Thank you for the, thank you for the way that you take care of us. Lord, we just pray that in this time and in the moments that you've given us that your spirit has kind of looked within our heart, stirred us up where we need to be stirred, challenged us to where we need to be challenged. God, we love you. Now, you know, Lord, if there's any listening out there or in here that still need to make that commitment to follow you, Lord, I pray that your spirit will make alive the words of grace and mercy to their heart and will stir them to action. But for all of us that do know you, we've given our heart and life to you. We still, day by day, moment by moment, need to be stirred to action, Father. So we come and ask, Lord, that your spirit make alive and real even the very convicting power of the Word of God, that's sharper than any two-edged sword. If there's areas of my life that need to be divided, then Lord, do it. But your splendor and glory be manifested. Now, thank you for this invitation, Lord. In this time together as we sing, Lord, let us respond to you. In Jesus' name. Man, is there a decision you need to make today? I invite you. I invite you to become a part of this church. I invite you to pray. Lay those things down at the feet of Christ. I invite you. That thing where you've been challenged today, we you let him have it? As we sing, it is well with my soul. <coughs> Like a river, a tank.
before you and they can look in the eyes of our Christ and say it is well. It is well with my soul and Lord you have made it so. I thank you Father for this day. I thank you for this time for this family. And to you be all glory and power in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. So good to see you all this morning. Enjoy the fellowship time, one with the other. Enjoy each other. Let's go out and praise him. Take his word to the nations, folks. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing how? By the word of Christ. God bless you. You guys are dismissed. Have a great week. to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. His love endures forever For the life that's been reborn His love endures forever Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise, Sing praise. 
forever God is faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever forever from the rising to the setting sun his love endures forever and by the grace of God we will carry on his love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise, sing praise. forever God is faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever forever God is faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever